So the signature course that I teach is uh, a philosophy course. It's Philosophy 252, uh, Eating Right, the Ethics of Food Choices and Food Policy. There's heaps of places where in our decisions about what to eat day to day, uh, moral issues arise. There's questions about uh, what kinds of food we ought to eat, what kinds of food, what kinds of effects our food choices have uh, on other people, on the environment, on the animals that are being raised for food. What we do in the course is we look at, first off, we start off looking at a bunch of issues that come up about uh, our individual food choices uh, with respect to that. Um, and then we shift in the second half of the course uh, to looking more at issues about food policy, issues about choices that we can make collectively as a society. The two main books are this book by Michael Pollan, The Omnivore's Dilemma, and this book by Peter Singer and Jim Mason, The Ethics of What We Eat. And it was actually, it was the Pollan book that sort of largely pulled me into these questions and made me realize that there was a lot of interesting philosophy here. It's a good book for people to read and it's a good resource to pull out a bunch of the lines of thought from, I think. So my area of expertise is not the sort of empirical facts about how farming operates. Um, I have guest speakers who come in and talk about that. The place where I have sort of value added for the course is that I have a lot of training in evaluating arguments and constructing arguments and trying to tear apart arguments and seeing like where, we, where one would want to poke in order to try and make it not work. So right, so one of the things to do with a course like this is to pro provide a sort of introduction to what one does as a philosopher and what one does in a philosophy class. And the way we do that is we sort of demonstrate philosophical reasoning at work on a particular kind of issue. In this case, extracting really clearly some pretty precise argument where we've got the premises, we've got the conclusion, we can see why the premises are supposed to support the conclusion. And extracting that and looking at it and dissecting it and seeing where, where one could object to it, how the objections would go, how the responses to the objections would go, and how the sort of series of moves uh, in evaluating whether the argument's going to succeed or not would go. And that's basically what we do as philosophers all day. So typically when somebody makes some argument about uh, what kinds of food choices we ought or ought not make, uh, there's two parts to the argument. There's a part where they make some claim about the facts about the production or consumption of that food, and there's a part where they make some claim about what the moral consequences of that empirical fact are. And so we look at both of those things. We uh, look at you know, what are the facts about uh, different kinds of animal-based agriculture uh, in the U.S. or other places right now? Um, you know, where does that hamburger come from? Uh, does the hamburger that you find in this store come from different places than the hamburger you that you find in this store? And are there interesting differences between those? Conditions in a lot of, uh, in a lot of big factory farming uh, operations are not so great for animals. Hens have, uh, hens raised for eggs uh, have very little space to, very little space to live in. Um, there's various kinds of things that are done to them in order to keep them from pecking each other. They have their beaks seared, which is not great for the hens. And so there's this question, you know, what, what, is, what impact does that have? What, what, is that, what upshot does that have for what we ought to do? One of the things that we're doing with the Signature Course program is looking at these kinds of 21st century challenges. And it's pretty clear that these questions about what kind of food ought I to eat, what kind of food policies ought we to collectively uh, implement and put into effect, these are questions that are going to certainly be live issues for the foreseeable future and probably throughout the whole rest of the 21st century. Um, certainly the part of the 21st century that our students are going to be engaging with, uh, these are questions that are going to loom large. These questions about you know, how are we going to feed everybody? What kinds of foods should we be feeding everybody? What kinds of foods should we be eating? What are the downstream consequences of our food choices? And to what extent should the downstream consequences of our food choices impose constraints on what kinds of food choices we make? It's so one of the things that I hope students will take from this signature course on the ethics of food choices and food policy is some tools that they can use to think about constructing their own individual policy, their own individual policy regarding their own food choices, their own choices that they make from day to day, and an awareness of some of the questions that come up in the designing of such a policy and in the decision to adopt it or not, and the decision of what kind of policy, if any, to adopt. Mm -hmm.